Hey, good morning, y'all. Happy Wednesday. My name is Lily, and I work in the Houston Zoo Conservation Education Department. And I'm here with Declan today, who works in the bug house. And we are going to meet some creepy crawlies and talk a little bit about Zubu. I'm really excited. Happy October. The weather's beautiful. And so you should come to the zoo and check out Zubu. We've got pumpkins and inflatables and all kinds of our creepy crawly residents. And you can see us every Friday until 8.30 p.m. We'll have all kinds of fun activities. And the bug house will be open during those late nights as well. Those Friday nights until 8.30 are included with your admission, so it's free for all of our members, and we hope to see you there. So come enjoy fall at the zoo. And now we have some creepy crawlies. So Declan, who do we have today? Okay, so first I'm going to bring out a New Guinea walking stick. These guys are gonna be native to the islands of New Guinea. This is gonna be a male. Okay, little buddy. And he jumps, okay. <laughs> so. There we go. Cool, cool. And as you can see, this guy's just going to be hanging out on my hand. He is going to be a male. I say that because of his size. Uh, males are going to be smaller. Females are going to be much larger. And they're also going to have a little ovipositor on their back end that's very obvious right here. comes to a very fine point. That's where the females will lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. Males also have a little fish-like hook on their back legs. They will use those to defend themselves as well as fight off other males as well as use them whenever they're trying to keep on to their females. Wow, he's pretty spiky on his back. He's kind of scary looking. Why is his back so spiky? Uh, so the reason being is because these guys, unlike most walking sticks, these guys are ground-dwelling walking sticks. So basically what that means is they're going to be walking on the ground and so in order to do that, they want to make sure that their back is very protected. And no one's going to want to eat them if they're covered in spines, a lot like a porcupine. Ooh, and he's got these like crazy long antenna that are moving all over the place. Why is he doing that? So what he's doing right now is he's just checking things out. He has what we call chemoreceptors in his antenna that basically kind of tell him, you know, what's, a, what's around him. So because his eyes are all the way back here, so this way he can give a bit of a heads up in case if he needs to make a quick decision such as either, oh, there's food right there, oh, there's a predator right there, I need to defend myself. Yeah, and you said he has eyes. Can What can he see? Can he see colors or movements or anything like that? So he can see as well as you and me. He actually uses his eyes to find all the edible greens. So these guys, uh, we have a fun nickname for them. We call them garbivores. They are basically opportunistic. Uh, as far as food goes, they will eat anything. Uh, the only thing we found they don't like is choya, but they will eat lettuce, fruits, veggies, leaves. They really, really love ginger. They will <laughs> eat it up, which is really good because we have a lot of ginger here at the Houston Zoo to feed them, and they will love it. Unfortunately, these guys are currently off exhibit right now, but we have them in the back. They are currently... Uh, they are currently in the nursery area, but as you can see, this guy is full grown, so he's actually living with his kids right now. <laughs> so, you know, stay at home, dad. <laughs> I love that. His back legs look like a grasshopper. Can he jump or does he just use those to climb and walk around? So he uses it to climb. He <laughs> cannot jump. His anatomy would not allow it. Mm, gotcha. And he is kind of like spiky and a little creepy looking. Can he bite or sting or anything like that? Uh, so any animal with a mouth part can bite, uh, however his bite would not hurt, it would just be more of a leave me alone. In terms of stinging, the only thing he could really sting you or stab you with are going to be his spines, but he's only going to do that as a defense, and he's going to give you a fair warning beforehand. Nice. Yeah, like for instance, you know, he saw that, he reacted, he's just like, I'm going to back up get in a defensive position, and then <laughs> if he were to, say, get scared, he would raise up his two back legs and be like, leave me alone. Oh, that's awesome. So he raised his tail there in response to just, like, moving and getting kind of spooked? Yeah. Wow, oh, that is super cool. That is awesome. What is your, like, favorite fun fact about these? Is there anything super strange about them? Uh, so these guys, unlike most walking sticks, are ground-dwelling walking sticks, which I think is really cool. These are also one of the first animals I actually learned to handle here at the Houston Zoo, so it kind of holds a special place in my heart. And of course, these guys are always really cool and I always have a fun time working with them. 
Uh, the really cool thing is, mm -hmm. of course, the spines, they were just really cool looking, mm -hmm. and they have great personalities. Oh, well, he's super cute. If, uh, if he is ready, we can meet our second friend if you're ready. Yeah, here, we can put this little guy back, and he's just going to crawl on there. He's going to be like, oh, wood. Here, I, I know what this <laughs> is. There we go. Cool, cool. Okay, we're mm -hmm. just going to put this in so he doesn't go and wander around. <laughs> All right. Okay, and this is going to be our next little friend. She is going to be a deadly mantis. Okay. Oh, and she sure does look like a dead leaf. Yeah. That name is perfect. Yep. And so what they will do is here, I'm just going to try and get her out there without annoying her too much. There we mm -hmm. go. Cool, cool. Okay, cool, cool. Here we go. Oh, how pretty. Yeah, so these are going to be deadly mantids. They are going to be from Malaysia. These <laughs> girls are very curious, and when I say girl, I, the reason I say that is because males are much skinnier, as well as they have more developed wings. Females, they're gonna, they can fly slightly, but not very well. Males are much better because they're much lighter in weight. Uh, females, uh, especially when they are full of an eggs, they cannot really get around too well. However, being the size that she is, she can actually defend herself from animals as big as she is. That's so cool. Now, she she's obviously called a dead leaf mantis, and she looks like one, but why does she look like a dead leaf? That's because whenever she is frightened or scared, she will actually put her entire body face down on the ground and basically look like a dead leaf. Oh, that's super awesome. Yeah. And she's reaching around with her front legs a lot. Is uh, is that, like, do all mantises do that? Why is she doing that? Yeah, so just like I was talking about with a walking stick, she kind of does this in order to kind of feel out to find any place that she can grab onto and climb up. Insects, uh, because most of them are small, uh, they like to be high up to get a good vantage point. So what she's doing is she's just kind of looking around and for the highest vantage point so she's going to climb up as high as she can so that way she can kind of see everything mm -hmm. that's actually why when we have them in the back area we like to have them in a high up tent and or screen screen tank and that's also why you'll find her here up in one of our taller tanks at in the uh, public area because they love to climb Ah, that makes sense. So you said she's using her legs and like looking around. She's got huge bug eyes. How well can she see? So she can see very well. They can actually see in, if memory serves, they can see in more spectrums than humans can. However, what she'll normally do is she'll basically jerk her head back and forth kind of to triangulate her prey. And what she can eat is basically anything she can get a hold of and take down. And most mantids, especially females, are a little more brazen, so they will actually go after much larger animals, some of them as big as themselves. Uh, males are a little more timid, uh, which makes sense because they're smaller in size, uh, so they won't quite go off, off after it, things as big as uh, themselves, but females can. <laughs> And so she can see pretty well. Can she hear or smell? And I see she has antennas too. Like how else can she kind of feel around her environment? Uh, so mantids actually do have ears. They actually have ears on their belly. So they have a single ear. They can't hear the exact direction of the sound, but they can still pick up noise. So they use mainly their eyes. That's why they're so big. And the cool thing is they can actually turn around 180 degrees. So they can essentially turn around the entire, almost, basically, and because their eyes are so big, they can essentially see 300, almost 360 degrees around their body. Oh, that's so cool. So she can turn her head around just like an owl. Yeah. Oh, that is super awesome. And so she eats other insects? Yeah, so she, we feed her here crickets. Uh, however, we've also given her watermelon in the past. She seems to really like it, especially on a hot day. Uh, however, in the wild, these guys would eat a wide variety of insects, lizards, and other small mammals. Mm -hmm. And these guys will actually be, a lot of people think they are scary, especially in the gardens. However, you kind of want them in the gardens because they help to deter a lot of pest insects and will actually eat uh, pest insects such as caterpillars, crickets, things that want to destroy all your fruits and veggies. Uh, however, these guys are also indiscriminate eaters, so they will also go after all the pollinators as well, so just keep that in mind. 
Gotcha. So even though she's a creepy crawly and can hunt things as big as her, like, we don't have to be afraid of her at all. Yeah, no. She can still bite, of course, because, you know, any animal with a mouth can. Uh, but she's more going to bite to be leave me alone. And mm-hmm. another thing they will do if they're really, really scared is they'll actually bring their wings out and they actually have a strike pattern with little eye spots that they'll use to spook predators long enough for her to get away. Oh, so that's super cool. Yeah. So not only are they not dangerous to us, they are really, really pretty, and they can hunt pest insects, so that's yeah. really helpful. Oh, well, what awesome friends to have around. She's a little bit less creepy crawly now, honestly, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and do we have any Facebook Live questions? All right. Oh, well, she's just, she's like, where are my questions? <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's so sweet. Do you know how old she is? Uh, she is roughly going to be a little over a year, so she's a about so they live about a year and a half so she has about six months uh however she is one of the younger of her group so you know there's always that the older her older siblings are a couple months older so they're a little they're a little more worn for wear but they are still going they're still moving around jumping around and Mm -hmm. most of them uh will hunt crickets on their own they don't really like us to force that feed Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said um, right after this live that she's going to have lunch. What is she having for lunch today? Uh, so on the menu today is crickets. Oh, what a treat. Yep. A classic. <laughs> yeah, but, and we, we here at the Houston Zoo, we go through a lot of crickets, and we use all of them to feed our many carnivores here on grounds, not just insects, but mm-hmm. over in the carnivore section, natural encounters, Mm-hmm. And of course, AAB and all the other sections. Yeah, we sure do go through a lot of crickets. It's true. Mm-hmm. All right. What do their legs feel like on your hand? Well, they feel like. Well, it's kind of hard <laughs> to describe. I guess they feel like little twigs. Mm-hmm. Are uh, they like pokey at all, or are they flat on your hand? Uh, is she sticky? They are very flat, so what they do is they have little hooks at the end of their legs that they use to grasp on, and that actually helps them, and it's so, to basically climb up glass. So they are so fine. That's why a lot of people will come in here and see some of our insects climbing up glass. That's actually, it's the same hooks for most insects that they use to just climb up glass. Oh, that's cool. So she's kind of sticky like a tree frog. Like she's not, she's not poking you at all, but she can just stick to you in glass. That's awesome. Yeah. So she is going to be a little over a year, uh, but they can live almost a year and a half. Oh. Yeah. So this is as big as this species will get, or the female anyways, right? Yes. You said males are smaller? Yeah. So females, they vary a little in size, of course, depending on how much food they get when they're little. Of course, the more food they get, the bigger they can grow. Um, But, of course, she is going to be about regular size. Of course, there's always, you know, the really big girls and the girls who don't quite eat as well when they're young, so they don't grow as fast. Gotcha. And is she is she used to being handled? I see she's like really moving around a lot or are they just Uh, usually this curious? So they're just usually this curious. This is our first time taking her out since she was a hatchling. Of course, we'll take them out when they're hatchlings to kind of look over them, make sure all their health is good, there's no serious injuries or anything, that we don't need to separate anyone. But yeah, she's she's been handled as a hatchling, but this is her first time as an adult. Gotcha. Well, I think that is going to be all of our time today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and make sure to join us next week for our next Facebook Live, and we'll see you at Zubu. Thank you, guys. <laughs>